what happens when a black hole consumes a neutron star, which I thought a neutron star was sort of a black hole, you know? Yeah, they're, they're certainly in a related class of objects. And so, so probably the best thing to do, though, is talk about what a star actually is. And then we can talk about these exotic stars, because that's yeah. they're, they're really just exotic forms of a star. So if you think about a star, you think of the sun, it's like, well, I understand the sun. It's a big ball of fire. Well, actually, it's not. Right, so the sun, the sun's not on fire. A lot of people have that misconception. Uh, it's not even, it doesn't even have very much oxygen in it at all. And you know that if your clothes catch on fire, you need to stop, drop, and roll. Right, that's because you're cutting off the oxygen supply. Well, the sun's not on fire. It's not made out of oxygen. Primarily, the sun is made out of hydrogen and helium. Now, it does have con uh, other fractions of contents in it, like oxygen, but not enough to burn. So, the the sun is a machine that generates a thermonuclear process in its core. That thermonuclear process, let's, let's divide that word out. Thermo means hot, and nuclear means it refers to nuclear reactions. So there are nuclear reactions taking place at the center of our star that turn hydrogen into helium by this process called nucleosynthesis. You're generating energy by taking two hydrogen atoms shoving them together in a, in a manner where they stick together at a nuclear level and become a helium nucleus, you actually lose a little bit of mass in that process, which is really unusual. But where does that mass go? Well, it goes into Einstein's other equation called E equals MC squared, one of his favorite poems, of mine at least. That's my favorite Einstein sonnet. The sonnet or the haiku, I'm not really sure. Anyway, E equals MC squared. So, so E means energy. M is mass, and C is the speed of light, which we know is a big number, then you square that really big number, right? So if there's a little tiny bit of mass that disappears, when you take two hydrogens, collapse them together into one helium nucleus, where does that energy go? I'm sorry, where does that mass go? It goes into that Einsteinian equation as the M. It gets multiplied by the speed of light squared, which is a truly large number. And then what do you get out the other side on the other side of the equal sign? Well, you get a little respectable burst of energy. A little puff of energy comes out the other side, right? So mass is actually lost as it's converted into energy. That's why it doesn't violate the conservation of principle of, uh, of conservation of mass or conservation of energy. It's just shifting from one form right. to the other. Right. Well, here's the thing. The sun, uh, it, the sun converts more than 4 million tons of mass to energy per second. Four million tons goes into the M side of that equation, then gets multiplied by the speed of light squared, which the speed of light is a ridiculously large number, then you square it and you get an even bigger number. What comes out the other side of that equation? More energy than human beings have ever created in their entire existence, including all of the power plants, nuclear weapons, any kind of power source you can imagine ever generated by humanity, the sun generates far more than that in simply one second of that thermonuclear fusion process. So, okay, well, now you've generated all kinds of heat and energy. It sounds like an explosion. That should just rip this star apart. Well, it doesn't because the sun is also extraordinarily massive. And so the mass of the sun is trying to, it, through its gravitational force, trying to squeeze that gas down into, into a single point but yet these explosions in the core are trying to blow the star apart. So you have this, so what, what, what a star is, you have this situation where it's a balance of pressure trying to rip the star apart from the inside out, gravity trying to crush the star down into a singularity, and neither force winning. It sits there as a balance, and it does it for billions of years. So a star itself is an amazing machine. It's just on this cusp of a balance between gravity trying to squish it out of existence pressure trying to blow it apart. Okay, so if that's what a star is, what happens when the fuel's all gone in the middle? So if you converted all your hydrogen to helium, or at least most of it, well, a star can get by by converting heavier elements like helium into other things like carbon, and it can convert, you know, as long as the star's big enough, it can convert materials all the way up to iron, and so it can synthesize these new things that we find on the periodic table, all the way up to iron. But then once you get to iron, uh, squeezing iron nuclei together into heavier elements does not produce energy. It actually begins to cost energy. And at that point, the stars are gone. 
So then what happens? Well, then gravity wins because the star can no longer produce heat that can cause the expanding out process. So the crushing in process is going to win. But it still has the mass. It still has the mass, exactly. So that's what causes so, the gravity to push in. So exactly. So all, all that mass is still there. Now, some of that mass has been lost to the universe in the form of radiation, energy streaming out, but mm -hmm. there's, still, there's still plenty of mass there, right? Now you have this star-sized object. And actually, the stars that can get this far are much more massive than the sun. They're, they're more massive than the sun to start with by a factor of eight or something like that. So, so those stars now have nothing restricting their gravity to collapse. And they crush down into smaller and smaller objects with all of that mass, which means the gravitational field around that object gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Because the closer you are to an object, the stronger the gravitational field is. And so, so as this tremendous mass gets into a smaller and smaller shape, or a smaller and smaller size, something has to stop that collapse, right? Well, there are various then laws that we find from the weird world of quantum mechanics that begin to stop this collapse. And the first of those is something called electron degenerate pressure, which from a layman's standpoint means you can't, two, you can't take two electrons and shove them together into the same exact place at the same exact time. And so since electrons just won't have it, <laughs> then, that, then that resistive force begins to stop the collapse up to a certain mass level. And so there are many objects that are held in place in check from collapsing called white dwarfs that are stopped by electron degenerate pressure. Okay. That's what's going to happen to our sun, by the way, someday. It'll, it'll form a white dwarf based on that process. If the star's more massive, though, even that electron degenerate pressure can be overcome. And so it actually will go past that level of quantum mechanics where you really can. You squeeze electrons out of existence entirely so that you can't have electron degenerate pressure anymore. There, in fact, the protons and electrons cease to exist, and the whole thing turns into a soup of neutrons, neutrally charged particles. And you can squeeze those down a lot farther. So now you've gone past this barrier where you even have electrons and protons that normal mass is made out of. You only have a big ball of neutrons. And that thing squeezes down ever smaller, ever smaller, until another force of quantum mechanics called neutron degenerate pressure stops the expansion. And that's basically almost the same thing. You can't take two neutrons that have the same state, same same position, same time, and shove them into the same location. So it resists that force. And that, that object then stopped by neutron degenerate pressure is a neutron star. Now what you have right. is you have something with the mass of, say, four or five suns squished down into a volume about the size of our city, Columbus. So Georgia. you could end up with a white door, but then if it continues to collapse further, you end up with a neutron star. Correct. I see where you're going. Correct.